In 1964, Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev proposed a method of measuring a civilization's level of technological advancement based on the amount of energy it is able to use. He defined three levels of civilization based on the order of the magnitude of power used. A type 1 civilization is a technological level of a civilization that is close to the level presently attained on Earth. Currently, the civilization of type 1 is usually defined as one that can harness all the energy that falls on a planet from its parent star. According to mass energy equivalents, type 1 implies the conversion of about 2 kilograms of matter into energy per second. An equivalent energy release could theoretically be achieved by fusing approximately 280 kilograms of hydrogen into helium per second. The Earth's oceans contain about 1.3 times 10 to the power of 9 cubic kilometers of water, meaning that in terms of available hydrogen, humans on Earth could sustain this rate of power consumption over geological timescales. We physicists rank civilizations not by politicians and great men and great leaders. We rank them by energy. A type 1 civilization has mastered planetary energy. All the energy of the sun that falls on their planet, the weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, they play with hurricanes. Antimatter in large quantities would have a mechanism to produce power on a scale several magnitudes above the current level of technology. In antimatter collisions, the entire rest mass of the particles is converted to radiant energy. Their energy density is about four orders of magnitude greater than that from using nuclear fission, and about two orders of magnitude greater than the best possible yield from fusion. The reaction of one kilogram of antimatter with one kilogram of matter would produce about 180 petajoules of energy. Although antimatter is sometimes proposed as a source of energy, this does not appear feasible. Artificially producing antimatter, according to current understanding of the laws of physics, involves first converting energy into mass, which yields no net energy. Artificially creating antimatter is only usable as a medium of energy storage, not as an energy source unless future technological developments allow the conversion of ordinary matter into antimatter. Theoretically, humans may, in the future, have the capability to cultivate and harvest a number of naturally occurring sources of antimatter. But there is a better way. Renewable energy through converting sunlight into electricity, either by using solar cells and concentrating solar power or indirectly through biofuel, wind, and hydroelectric power. If a civilization constructed very large space-based solar power satellites, Type 1 power levels might become achievable. These could convert sunlight into microwave power and beam that to collectors on Earth. A Type 2 civilization might use the same techniques employed by a Type 1 civilization but applied to a large number of planets in a large number of planetary systems, capable of harnessing the energy radiated by its own star. For example, the stage of successful construction of a Dyson sphere, or similar megastructures as a system of orbiting solar power satellites meant to enclose a star completely and capture most or all of its energy output. A Type II civilization plays with stars. That's the next level of energy. And Star Trek and the Federation of Planets is just beginning to play with stars and nearby star systems. That would be a type two civilization. Another means to generate usable energy would be to feed a stellar mass into a black hole and collect photons emitted by the accretion disk more simply would be to capture photons already escaping from the accretion disk, reducing a black hole's angular momentum. This is known as the Penrose process. Star lifting is a process where an advanced civilization could remove a substantial portion of a star's matter in a controlled manner for their energy needs. Antimatter is likely to be produced as an industrial byproduct of a number of megascale engineering processes and therefore could be recycled. In multiple star systems of a sufficiently large number of stars, 
absorbing a small but significant fraction of the output of each individual star. Then there's type three, galactic. They have harnessed the power of maybe a hundred billion star systems like Independence Day, like Star Wars, like the Borg on Star Trek. A galactic civilization or type three civilization is in possession of energy at the scale of its own host galaxy. They might use the same techniques employed by a type two civilization, but applied to most, if not all possible stars of their host galaxy or more neighboring galaxies. They may also be able to tap into the energy released from supermassive black holes, which are theorized to exist at the center of most galaxies. A type three civilization might also be able to use white holes. If they exist, they could provide large amounts of energy from collecting the matter propelling outwards. Capturing the energy of gamma ray burst is another theoretically possible power source for a highly advanced civilization. The emissions from quasars are comparable to those of small active galaxies and could provide a massive power source if it's possible to attain their energy. Now on this scale, are we type one that control hurricanes? Are we type two that control star systems? Are we type three that roam the galactic space lanes? No, we're type zero. We get our energy from dead plants, oil and coal. You can show that we are about 100 years away from being a type one civilization. And you see evidence of this everywhere I go. The internet, what is the internet? The internet is the beginning of a type one telephone system. So we're privileged to be alive to see the birth pangs of a type one civilization. What language will this type one civilization speak? Probably English. It is already the number one second language on the planet Earth, the language of science, commerce, art. If you take a look at the economy, we're witnessing the beginning of a type one economy, the European Union. These nations have slaughtered each other ever since the ice melted 10,000 years ago, and now they're forming a single block. And why are they ganging together? To compete against NAFTA. So we're seeing the beginning of a type one economy. We're seeing the beginning of a type one culture with rock and roll. Uh, what is blue jeans? What is rock and roll? What is Chanel and uh, Louis Vuitton? The beginning of a type one culture. And there is a backlash. There are some people who don't like this transition to type one. People who are fundamentalists, terrorists, for example, they prefer more, be more comfortable not 100 years in the future. They would rather be 500 years into the past. So we see the birth pangs of the beginning of type one. And I personally think that is perhaps the greatest transition in the history of human civilization. From the fragmented, rather backward civilization of today to a planetary civilization 100 years from now. The human species has undergone many large-scale transitions during its history. For example, the Industrial Revolution. The transition from a Type 0 to Type 1 civilization could potentially have similar if not greater dramatic effects in our society, if we're ever able to reach such a transition. A growing fear is that the transition type from Type 0 to Type 1 might carry a strong risk of self-destruction since there would no longer be room for further expansion on the civilization's home planet. The limitation of biological life forms and the evolution of computing technology may lead to the transformation of the civilization through mind uploading and artificial general intelligence during the transition from type one to type two, leading to a digitalized civilization. There are also many extensions and modifications to the Kardashev scale that have been proposed, such as a type four civilization, which is also called a universal civilization that can control energy at the scale of its entire host universe. And a type omega or type five civilization, also called a multi-universal civilization that can control energy at the scale of multiple universes and may be able to create universes themselves. But, we will discuss these types of civilizations extensively in another video. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by liking, subscribing, and ringing the bell to never miss videos like this.